Jedi Rich here. Naked Jedi. Uh, today is day 19 of the Vegas shutdown. It is Sunday, April 5th, 2020. CE, Planet Earth. Uh, current time is about, oh, it's about 2 a.m. here in Las Vegas at the time of the shooting. <laughs> at the time of this filming. <laughs> what I'm about to show you is, is that these, uh, uh, what Las Vegas Metro is doing in some of the casinos is doing some active shooter training. Loading, reloading. Here they come. And they're sending this out to the public to brag about how great they're doing. Um, I'm presumably, I, I don't know why else they would be sending it out, but saying, hey, look what we're doing. We're doing some stuff. Now, let me ask you guys this. Does that make Vegas look uh, appealing when you see this sort of stuff? I mean, is that the sort of thing that you want to see coming out of Vegas? Right. Uh, you know, it didn't make me feel good either. Um, and it's just one of those things that, that kind of is further emphasizing what we're talking about here. Is this really about a virus? I mean, if it's such a deadly virus, then then why are the cops running around, you know, first of all, doing all these trainings and stuff, you know, I mean, it's like they, they're not concerned about the virus. Secondly, there are cops arresting people on the streets that could be infected, you know. I mean, they're not testing them before they arrest them or bring them in the jails. So obviously the cops aren't that concerned about getting a deadly virus. So that aside, let's talk about that. Jedi Joy will be up later this morning and I'll post up whatever she'll do a blog probably about, about something she always gets fired up about something in the morning but um, what she has been recently fired up is she can't see how this seasonal she's talked to people who have had the flu who's had the, I'm sorry the virus and the, and, and they, they basically just told her it was a flu a milder flu than what they've normally had. They had they had they didn't even have they didn't even have nauseousness really, just a fever and some respiratory stuff for about a week. And it's just a normal flu. And the people who are dying are like ninety three years old, the people who die every year from the flu. So we're up to seven thousand deaths. If that sounds shocking to you, just so you know, twenty two thousand people have already died from the normal flu virus this season alone. So that's just 7,000 plus 22,000. Normally, every year, 49,000 people die in the U.S. alone from a, from a flu virus. These are people who are on respiratory. You know, it's just what happens. It's just normal. So they're, they're saying, oh, my God, 7,000 people dead from this virus all over the United States. Are you kidding me? I'm pretty sure more people died in a car accident that day. I don't want to sound like that Neil Tyson guy, but really, let's put it in perspective here. We're talking about 7,000 people that were like you know, on life support anyways. Most likely, we're not talking about... Show me one person that, that wasn't in, you know... I mean, one person has died from this disease that wasn't like 197. I'm not kidding. I'm not being rude. I'm not being insensitive. What I'm doing is I'm pointing out facts. Every year, people die from a flu virus. 50,000 people in the U.S. Why aren't you freaking out about that? Only 7,000 have died from this one so far. Now, maybe this will go up to 100,000. But still, we're talking about the fringes. But still, I don't even see the evidence of that. I'm seeing this at 7,000. They keep telling me it's going to be up to 200,000. But I'm seeing it at 7,000 right now. And, you know, I mean, we've taken every precaution possible. And then I've also talked to people that have got the virus. And they've fully recovered. And when they said it, they, they talk like it. It was like, you're talking to someone who just basically described that they had the flu. Now, I'm not talking about the people who are tweeting online these elaborate stories like, oh my gosh, I hear the most. By the way, we just decided Twitter is nothing but fake news. It's just people looking for hearts, people to heart their, retweet their things, so they'll say whatever they think the masses want to hear. So you hear all sorts of crazy stuff, and, and the news media is ridiculous. You guys know that. That's why you're watching me. So, anyway, so I saw that this morning, and that was that brought a big concern, and Jedi Joe will talk about it. I uh, wanted to get you guys' take on it. Day 19, what else is going on here? Um, I see a lot of people uh, thanking Sheldon Allison for 
giving money to his employees. Well, I'll give you, let me share something with you. Um, <laughs> two things. He has 9,000 employees, okay? Do you know what, what it would take to restaff 9,000 employees in a town where everyone will leave if they lose their jobs? Like, if you lose your job at the casino, there's no other jobs here. You would have to move to another town. So if they're going to close down for 45 days, well, these people will be gone by the time they reopen. And there's not going to be a lot of business when they open anyways. So the point being, it's not that it, 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 it was this generous offering. He's making it sound like a generous offering, but it would be much more expensive to have to rehire, retrain, and restaff 9,000 employees. So rather than cutting them all loose and just have a total mess when the doors open up and they try to restart the casino with nobody knowing what's going on, he wants to retain his staff, and that's smart. Now, the other issue is this. Now, I have a theory that this is bigger than... The end, um, that that this whole thing, believe it or not, and I know you're all gonna gonna say I'm nuts. You're all gonna say, "Oh my God, check out the crack." Go ahead, please do, because I want to hear counting opinions on this. But this is what I'm thinking: that in 2015, Sheldon Adelson bought the Review Journal. And he bought it for a reason. Now I'm not sure why, but I'm pretty sure it was to manipulate the public, so that he get a stadium, get all sorts of other things. Well. A lot of stuff was going on with that, and Trump gets elected, and a lot of stuff was going on in the Middle East, and, and Sheldon's very tied into the Middle East with, with Israel and his ties there, and, and they all hate Iran, and all this stuff's going on in 2016, 20. in 2017, we get a Stephen Paddock type attack, 700 people dead, shot, excuse me, 58 people dead, 700 people shot, this was just two years ago. So that's why I'm bringing it up. So this is 2017, right there at Mandalay Bay. Now, everyone said this was some sort of, but it was a vendetta against MGM, for sure. The guy went to put MGM out of business for some reason. The CEO of MGM at the time was Jim Murin. Jim Murin is a Hillary Clinton supporter. Sheldon Adelson is a Trump supporter. Now, I'm not saying the two are connected, but man, karmically, wow. What a weird thing. The guy shoots up a, what would be predominantly probably Republican, uh, an, a Republican event, because it was a country music festival with country music stars like what, Trace Atkins and guys like that, you know, real, you know, down south, you know, Trump guys. Uh, it's Republican no matter what. They're not Trump guys, they're just whoever is a Republican. That, that's a problem with Republicans, you see. They, they, they don't want to read beyond the, the, the bullet points. So the problem with Republicans today is, is that they've been hijacked by people that don't read beyond the headlines. So they don't care who it is as long as they're Republican and they sound cool. They won't look beyond that. Well, the problem is when you don't do that, well, look what's happened. So anyway, so that's so that's the issue with the, with the Trump issue. So I think there's some tension with Trump and Sheldon and Jimmy Orin on the 2017 thing, but I can't be certain. Who knows? It's all sealed. But there's a little suspicion there. So everything's cruising along. They don't even stop anything. Nothing changes in Vegas, by the way. After 2017, not one single plan changed. They didn't change the idea of where they put the stadium, even though it was shot like, like there was a disaster there. They didn't change any of the cops. They, didn't, they, they re-elected the same sheriff, the same mayor. Everyone is in the same position. They even promoted, I think they, they since then, they, they, they bumped up the, one of the commissioners. I mean, everything is the same here in Vegas after 2017. Okay, that's fine. We, you know, run with the same fucking crew. Now, what happens now, this is where you're going to think I'm kind of nuts, is that now 2019, you start passing laws like homeless laws, and well, 2017 passed anti-pigeon laws, and all these things, I mean, I don't know, it's just getting weirder. Anti-people laws is what they are. They're laws against people drinking out of, out of glass containers. That's anti-people. There's laws against people feeding pigeons. That's anti-people. And there's laws against homeless people. Well, those are people, <laughs> just in general. And the fact of the matter is, is that those three things are what make Vegas, if you think about it. You have the homeless people, rock and roll. I mean, it's like every major city has homeless people. Who knows why? But they're there, and you take care of them. Why? Because we're an affluent society, and that's what affluent societies do. 
And apparently, when you don't take care of your homeless people, the affluent society gets shut down by the universe in one way or another. Okay, that's my one theory, is that some of this is cosmic, cosmic karma. You know, this place was disregarding all sorts of things. I mean, look at the Al Giant Stadium. They've tested positive. They're still moving forward with, with, with the progress, even though they know that it's unsafe. According to them, if, I mean, if everything's so unsafe here, how about this? You can't have both sides. If everything is so dangerous in Las Vegas that you cannot go outside and, st- and you cannot have the casinos open and you don't want to be, then why is it that people can work at Al Giant Stadium that have the virus? That's a place where it's infected. They didn't even take any precautions on that. So why is that? So that, that would lead me to believe that perhaps it's maybe not as deadly as they say it is. Now, if I'm wrong, well, then why are you guys going to work? <laughs> so it's one side or the other. Okay. So we have this virus situation. So it seems like everyone's hyper reacted to a virus. Shut everything down for the reason of personal safety. Fear. People are afraid. Right. Now, as a Jedi, I'm here to tell you that if that fear is the path to the dark side. And if you cannot see that as evidence, look around. Look at all the people rush into the stores to hoard as much water and as much food for themselves and not share with any of their neighbors or anybody, just for themselves. Because they're afraid that they're not going to get theirs. Okay. Well, what happened was is just disaster. So let's look with let, let's um, let's use an analogy. We're on, for lack of a better sh- term, the Titanic. Something that think nobody thinks is possibly sinkable, which is the U.S. economy, which is Las Vegas is not sinkable. Okay. Now, what's the first thing that happened when the when the captain realized that the ship had hit an iceberg and was taking on water. He denied it. It was impossible that this could you know, be happening. It took him a long time for the captain to even realize it. And when they finally realized it, it was too late. I mean, water had already been... I mean, it was already too late, but water had been coming on. Now, the first thing they decided to do was not tell the passengers. For the primary reason was that they did not plan for the impossible, that Vegas could collapse, okay? They did not plan for that. What happened was you have a lot of people pressing really hard when the market was at 30,000. And when it came out from underneath, those things are starting to tumble, okay? So where we're going with this now is we have what's going on is gonna be called a domino effect. And what you're watching the bloggers and these other people do, all they're doing is saying, oh my gosh, look at that. And there goes another guy jumping out of the building and dying. Oh my God, and look. And then look, that guy's jumping off the boat and he's swimming for his life. I wonder why. Oh my God, look. All this water is floating up in here and we're just sinking. And, and there's not a, it's like It's like they're just kind of reporting as they're going down. Because they don't actually believe they're going down. Now, if you've been watching our channel, we saw what was happening way back March 13th, and we were freaking out. Now we're not freaking out so much because, you know, you process the emotions, you kind of get a level head. That's where we're at. What's going to happen here is that everyone's starting to realize, and they're going to see that, wow, we're sinking, and they're not telling us. I mean, just look at the videos. Just look around. This is World War whatever. It's been shut down. There's There's been an attack somehow. Somewhere has been an attack on our economy to the point where every casino is shut down. Now, whether it's using the hysteria of the virus or something greater than that, and they're just kind of using the virus to cover it up, or the market was overblown and they needed a reason to wipe out a bunch of, you know, just bullshit projects. You know, for a number, there's a lot of them here in Vegas. The Drew, Resort World. I'm looking. At, I'm watching this guy, one man camera. I feel bad for him. You guys should check him out. But he, he goes out there every every few every few weeks or so to do the Resort World updates. I I, I was doing that back in 2015, 2016 before I realized it, it doesn't. It, there's nothing happening there. They don't actually do anything. It's kind of an investor scam for the Chinese, I think. 
So it leads me to my next point. Oh, man, we're running out of time. I don't think I'm going to have to get time to all this. But basically, my theory is this, is that this whole thing is a battle between Gentine Group, which is the one who owns Resort World, Steve Wynn, and Sheldon Adelson, right there in that corner there. And it all goes back to China in Macau. And what they were doing in Macau, the Chinese, China's response was to come over here and do things like paint their building the exact same color as Steve Wynn's. I mean, what did they think would happen? I mean, they, they, they were just messing with him. They were saying there was a warning to Steve. To St- Steve Wynn uh, was still there at the time, but he was on his way out because they were, you know, there was a warning as I get, but Steve Wynn kept pressing forward. And what happened? Nine more people came forward to accuse him of, 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 of rape and molestation. So, I mean, these are huge things. Now, now I'm saying that the Chinese, man, they're pretty corporate espionage. That's their game. You know, how hard would it be to find, to hire someone to do some investigation to find out who Steve Wynn had been bought, you know, basically sexually abusing and get them to testify? It wouldn't be too hard if, if he just knew what to do, I guess, because that's what happened. Someone did. Someone got seven more people back in. Anyway, so he gets kicked out. Then now we're cruising along and Sheldon Adelson in 2019, their C- CEO, I forget his name, I think Adam Goldberg. He declares that 2019 is the best year ever. It's the best second quarter that Las Vegas Sands has ever seen, in most, mostly because of the stuff we're doing in Macau. And in fact, we're investing in both hands, quote unquote, into Macau. That's China. All right, that was 2019. Trump's over there, you know, with Sheldon, and we're talking about 25% tariffs, and we're going to take down your economy, we're going to stop buying, we're going to start taxing all your stuff. I mean, he's just like really just waving his dick around over trying to like, what are you going to do, guy? You can't do nothing. And the next thing you know, a few months later, there's this hysteria about this shutdown city and this deadly virus that's going to kill the entire world. Been released. Oh my gosh, all of a sudden everybody in the United States shuts down. The stock market drops almost in half, at least 33% in, in like one week. I mean, we're talking more people, I mean, more people jumping out of windows out of that, out of the Empire State Building that day than, than probably in 1939. So, crazy, crazy times, right? And, um, and so, so it just so when you step back, and so these are the things as a journalist I see. So it's a timeline. So, so that's where you guys will think I'm crazy. Now, but I be, believe as time goes on, you will start to realize slowly that that hey man, maybe the Titanic was is sinking, and when that happens, y'all gonna get real mad. Okay, you're gonna get very angry when you realize that you've been. That what what's happening? Something I don't know exactly, but you're gonna find out it's political. It's gonna find out that they just fucked everything up because they just fucked it up, both sides. And you're gonna get angry because that's watch any move. That's just how it happened. That's how revolutions happen. That's how things change. Is you find that's why they're keeping it a secret from you that they made a mistake because that generation, like Steve Sisolak's age and Donald Trump's age, those guys, you know, the ones who are susceptible to the virus. So Steve, Steve Sisolak, you see, he uh, and Donald Trump, they are of the age group that was the, ha- I'll call it the happy days generation, where you had the real squares like Richie Cunningham, and you just, everyone just followed the rules, and they just wanted one man, one woman, and, you know, and black people were kind of knew their place, and white people were nice to them, and everybody was cool, and, you know, it wasn't any racism, you know, and then, but then, but there was one guy who was always a rebel, and that's what every one of those, these guys wants to be. Steve Sisolak, Donald Trump, they all want to be Fonzie. Now, what's the one thing that Fonzie couldn't do? Fonzie could do anything. I mean, nothing scared him. If there was a problem, they called the Fonz over, and he just laid down the law like Trump. He ain't doing that, and you get out, and you're fired. And I, you know, snap his fingers. Hey, you know. But what's the one thing that he couldn't do? That generation cannot do one thing. They're incapable of it. And that's admitting when they're wrong. I don't know why. They've just been taught that that's just... That they can never be wrong. That there's, a, you know, so and that admission of wrong is, and you see it in the Fonzie. Watch, I think out of ten years, he admitted he was wrong once, and it was a whole episode, and he couldn't actually say the word. It was like, uh, uh, 
Hey, um, I'd like to say I was, you know, I kind of did that. And so, did that for a while. And, and anyways, that's the blog there. So, hey, if I'm wrong, let me know. Throw, my, throw your comments down there. Let me know what's up because I want to hear it. Because I personally think there's something more going on in the virus. I mean, just look around. And the sooner that we all wake up and figure that out, the sooner we can figure out what to do. And as soon as you figure out, as soon as you all see that the, sink, that the Titanic's sinking, like I see it, the sooner you'll get on board my train and help me try to figure out how to fucking save ourselves. <laughs> Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame, we on top, shout out, shout out, check it out.